Hi guys, welcome! In this video, we'll take a closer look at the Shadow Chaser skill Magic Trap. This is the bread and butter of Shadow Chasers for PvP and WoW due to its range and insane damage. We'll discuss how to increase the damage of Magic Trap, which skill combos to use, and what changes will happen to this skill in future episodes. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll get a better understanding on how to use Magic Trap effectively. Alright, without further ado, let's begin. First, let's take a look at a description of Magic Trap. Magic Trap is an AoE ground debuff skill that deals physical damage per second and SP reduction to enemies stepping on the trap. Up to two Magic Traps can be placed on the ground and each trap lasts for 15 seconds. The damage of Magic Trap is primarily based on the Shadow Chaser's physical attack and the target's in stat. What makes this skill overpowered is that it is not affected by element and race modifiers. It is of neither neutral element nor demi-human race. Thus, using Starlight Ship or Hydra Card won't increase the damage of Magic Trap against other players. In addition, the damage taken from Magic Trap won't be reduced by enemies' neutral and demi-human damage reduction. Thereby, using Rage Card or Thyra Frog Card will not be of much help against this skill. So how can we improve the damage output of Magic Trap? The answer is we need to invest heavily on equipment, cards, stats, runes, and other things that can increase the following attributes. Physical attack, melee or range damage depending on the weapon you're using, ignore death, and death penetration. Let's first start with the equipment set. Increasing your damage output will largely be determined by the weapon you're using since the attack of bow users is based on dexterity while the attack of dagger users is based on strength. Choosing between bow and dagger will depend on your playstyle and personal preference. For bow users, the best option is the mystery bow as it gives the highest raw attack power compared to other bows. Pair it with a ninja suit moonlight to activate the Minoris card deposit effect. This will give 50% ignore death bonus when you also have two Minoris cards in your weapon. An alternative to the Ninja Suit Moonlight is to use a tier 4 plus 10 Bohemian Coat, inlaid with an Archer Skeleton Star card for higher damage output. Then put two Archer Skeleton cards on your Mystery Bow and deposit one on your Handbook for additional 25% raw attack. The best enchantments to get are Morale for Ignore Death or Arch for Range Attack. If you want to play with a dagger, then it is recommended to get either a Holy Dagger or a Sandstorm. A tier 8 plus 15 Holy Dagger gives higher attack than a Mystery Bow. It should be coupled with a tier 8 Thief Clothes to activate the deposit effect of Minora's card. However, if you want to use the Backstaff plus Magic Trap combo, then Sandstorm would be better than the Holy Dagger as it does not need any set effect to activate the Minora's card ignore death bonus. In addition, it gives a high hit bonus to make sure that your backstab skill won't miss. The enchantments to get are Morale for Ignore Death or Sharp Blade for melee damage. For the offhand, the best option for bow users would be the Niles Bracelet, as it gives 15% range damage. Upgrade it to tier 4 for more decks and refine it to plus 10 for plus 2% range damage or plus 15 for a total of plus 6% range damage. For dagger users, use a Rasa bracelet for a plus 25% ignore death. The only garment that can increase the damage of magic trap is the ancient cape which gives plus 15% ignore death. As for the footgears, the rune boots is best in slot due to the plus 3% attack it gives. For accessories, just use any which gives physical attack and plus 3 to 4% damage increase enchantment. It will also be good for dagger users to get a 4th enchant sharp blade for increased melee damage. For accessory cards, you may craft or buy a Zipper Bear Star card which gives plus 3% attack. You may also inlay the Marine Sphere card which lets you cast level 3 Magnum Break, which is a skill that increases attack by 20%. Next for the headwares, these are the suggested items. For the head, you may use the Cat Ear Berry, the Golden Antenna, or the Majestic Goat. For dagger users, additional options are the Rudolph's Horn or a plus 10 Helmet of Orc Hero. For headwear cards, the most ideal card to use is the Andre Star card as it gives physical penetration and ignore death. A cheaper alternative is the Rocker Star card which gives plus 2 dex and plus 20 attack. 
For the face, get a nut on head for additional 5% ignore death. As for the gotcha option, it is good to have the Frost Mask Raid Mask, which increases raw attack significantly when you have attributes that have a total of at least 99. For the mouth, get a Dream Weave Silk Gotcha item which gives penetration. You may also craft a blow gun for bow users or pipe for dagger users. For the back item, craft a Devil Wing for additional plus 1 to all attributes and plus 5% damage. For bow users, the alternative is the Quiver for additional 7% range attack. And for the tail, you can get either the Matrosa's tail or the Beast tail if you don't have the gacha item Winch Birch Drake. Take note that maxing the enhancement of your weapon and accessories is mandatory to have higher damage output. There is also an advantage in refining the item to a higher level as it increases your fine attack which also affects the damage output of mana trap. In addition, you only need a maximum of 100% ignore depth stat as anything in excess will not be useful. As such, you need to take into consideration your ignore death from other sources such as runes, rare blessings, and food when you are building your equipment set. However, in episode 5, the new mouse will have death percent stat, which can offset your ignore death. Thus, the maximum ignore death that you can get in future episodes is 150%. Next, let's talk about the stats that can increase magic trap damage. For bow users, the primary stat that increases range attack is dexterity. Whereas for dagger users, the primary stat that increases melee attack is strength. Prioritize leveling up these stats for pure raw attack damage. Luck and strength also slightly increase range attack where every 5 points of either luck or strength gives one attack. As for melee attack, it can be slightly boosted by luck and dex. Next, let's take a look at the important runes that can increase the damage of magic trap. First up, we have Magic Trap Enhanced Runes which can increase the damage of Magic Trap by 10% each. Activating 3 of these will give a total of 30% damage increase to Magic Trap. Next, we have the 5 Damage Percent Runes, each of which increases attack by 1%. Lastly, we have 3 Ignore Death Runes which gives 1% Ignore Death each. For bow users, here are other runes that you should get. First, we have the Range Physical Damage Runes. Each of these increases range damage by 1%. Then activate all the bow mystery runes which increases attack by 8 when using bows. After that, proceed to the 10 dex runes. For dagger users, the runes that you should get instead are the Sword Mastery runes and Strength runes. In addition, for added utility, you may get the Magic Trap Exorcism runes. These will increase SP loss of targets by 20 each. As for your remaining contribution points, just allocate them on nearby attack runes. As for the succeeding runes, it will be based on your playstyle and personal preference. Now let's talk about the other ways to increase magic trap damage. A good pet to have is the Desert Wolf Baby since it gives plus 5% death penetration at max skill level. Other good pets to have are the Deveruchi which gives plus 40 attack and plus 10 flee, or the Cruiser which gives plus 40 attack and plus 5% damage reduction at max skill level. Next, for Guild Blessings, max out the Combat Blessings to 100 to gain plus 200 attack. Then for Attack Prayer cards, max them out in the following order. Physical Penetration, Ignore Death, Attack, and then lastly is Damage to Demi Human to prepare for future episodes. Then for foods aside from Strength and Dex meals, you need to cook and eat 4 to 5 star foods for a higher damage output. The best cuisine to eat would be the original Will Seafood Soup as it does not only give attack but also increase Ignore Death which can help you achieve 100% Ignore Death. 6 of these would grant a total of 240 attack and 15% Ignore Death stat. Another way to increase Dex and Strength is to multi-job. For bow users, you can multi-job to Ranger for additional plus 10 Dex. In the future, having a Sorcerer multi-job will also give plus 10 Dex. For dagger users, you can multi-job to Rune Knight or Genetic for additional plus 10 strength each. Last but not the least is to slowly build up your attack in the Adventure Handbook using headwear and card unlocks and deposits. 
Remember though that these tips are only applicable for increasing the damage of your magic trap. But in PvP and Will, you need to have a balance between offense and defense. A dead Shadow Chaser won't deal damage, so survivability is as important as having high damage. Now let's talk about skill combos. To increase the damage of Magic Trap, you need to get level 5 Shadow Chase skill. This passive increases physical damage by 10% and attack by 10% while hiding. Then get the Plagiarize skill level 4 Enchant Deadly Poison from the Highland Parasite in the Border Checkpoint. This will increase your attack by 12% for 40 seconds. Magic Trap is best partnered with skills that immobilize enemies so that they stay within the area of effect. One of the easiest combos is to lay ankle snare straps on the ground and wait for opponents to be rooted. Then place two magic traps underneath the trap victim for an easy kill. To get ankle snare, you need to use level 7 plagiarism on punks in the clock tower first floor. This will allow you to set a maximum of 4 traps, each of which snares targets for 10 seconds. For dagger users, you can add magic trap to the ambush backstab combo to ensure the kill on high def and high fully players. Lastly, let's look into the future changes on magic trap. In episode 5, magic trap will be more balanced as it will be force neutral skill and can be affected by element and race modifiers. That means its damage can be increased by starlight ship, hydra card, spike scarf, and hockey mask. Archer Skeleton cards on Weapon and Handbook will still be useful but using Elemental and Race Modifier cards will yield higher damage output. This skill adjustment will make Magic Trap more powerful against mobs. However, the drawback is that it can be countered by defense items that give neutral and demi-human damage reduction. Also, the Sage class will become available in the next episode and their skill Land Protection can remove Magic Trap from the ground. Thus, Magic Trap will be more powerful in PvE but less effective in PvP. Nevertheless, it will still be of significant utility in PvP against high-end enemies such as Warlocks and Archbishops to drain their SP. In Episode 6, Shadow Chasers will have runes that give Silence debuffs to Magic Trap. This debuff can ignore Silence immunity so that it cannot be countered by Marduk card. Alright, so far we discussed the equipment, cards, stats, skills, screens, and all the other things that can increase magic trap damage. We also touch on the best combos to use in PvP and WoW and how to prepare for the future episode. I hope that with this guide you now have a better understanding on how to make your Shadow Chaser unstoppable. Alright, that's it for this video guys. Don't forget to like if you enjoyed watching this guide. If you're new here, I would love for you to consider subscribing by hitting your subscribe button down below. I would love to have your back. Thank you for watching and see you in our next episode.